Welcome back everyone. Got a shorter one for you today. We have us a 2000 excursion here, limited, with a back door latch that does not work. And so when it finally gave up the ghost, I popped the trim off the inside and got to look him. And what it looked like broke was this right here, this little retainer. And this part number and the link to where I purchased it will be in the description below. It's kind of a pricey little piece of plastic. I think it was like $6.35. It wasn't cheap. So fixing this, because all that happened was there's a, there's a rod behind this, a latch rod. And that little plastic piece threads onto it and then it snaps into the latch itself. And so when you pull on this, it activates the latch and opens the door. So... What I'm going to do is get this popped open so I can show you guys what it looks like and we'll start getting stuff replaced and hopefully set it up to where it does not break again. Okay, now we're in here with the uh, with the barn doors open, just having a grand old time. The trim, like I said, was already off. It is, it's got these hooks on it, like so, and then it's also got these straight snaps that hold it in place here and here the strikers keep in mind are on both sides of the door and you have all your control cables and stuff that come right here that's your rear wiper motor um you can still get the cables and, and whatnot as well but to get the trim off you know you get it loose and then you, you essentially just kind of gently pry it back and uh, up and whatnot to maneuver it and get it out. Just be gentle with it. There's no, I don't know how to describe it. Just essentially pull it off, but don't go crazy with it. Uh, you do need to remove this handle, which goes right here, and it has a couple of screws, and they are Torx. They're like T30, probably something like that. But get those off, pull the handle off, then you can pull the trim. These are the only two screws that hold that trim piece on. Once you get it off, that's all the room you're going to have. So to open the door, I'm going to get you... Well, first I'll show you in here. This is the broken piece. This is what activates your latch right here. This rod, if I can get in here, is supposed to go up and on the back side attach to the new piece, which looks like this. And it's folded over now. But you can unfold it. Well, I'm not going to do it one-handed. That's kind of hard to do. But you fold it over, and you got that center portion that's threaded, and then this other piece which snaps into place. So, snaps on the back side. Your rod sticks up from the bottom, and then that's how everything works. So, with that being broken, of course, that's why the door won't open. That's why the latch is just all floppy. So, to get the door open... You want to come through here. See this ball right here? That's important. You want to get back here with your screwdriver and pry that way to activate everything and open the door. Let me see if I can show you this way. And then, uh, well, you got to be careful because this is a fiberglass door frame. You don't want to break stuff, but you, uh, and sometimes it does take a little bit of force, but once you get it, you get it worked just the right spot, right amount of force moving to the passenger side, you can push the door open, assuming the rest of your cables and stuff are still good. And yeah, you will, don't go too hard or you will start tearing stuff up. And make sure that stuff's not catching back here because as you push, as you push right down there, it'll pull this down and it'll catch on that chunk of the plastic handle and you don't want that. So you got to keep that in mind. But that's how you get the door open once you get the trim off. And then once the door's open, you can open the barn doors and just kind of sit in here like so and, uh, and work on it. So next step, looks like we got two studs there that's not even screwed on all the way that nut got two there and none over here oh no i guess we got one right up there so we got some stuff to take off and then we should be able to pull 
this latch assembly out and get this on a lot easier because there's not really a good way to do it with everything sitting in here solid. All right, well, there we have the new piece and the old piece. I reassembled the old piece, but it's it's cracked and broken and it's not usable anymore. But this does mean I got the right part because honestly, I wasn't sure until now, but it is the correct part. And I went ahead and got everything loose and pulled it back so I could pop it out of there, the old plastic holder. And there's a couple of studs on this side. There's the nuts. 7 16 or 11 millimeter will get them off for you. Little tiny quarter inch drive, real handy. And where's the other? There's the other one. There. There's only, yeah, there's only three of them that hold it on. And then you just pull it off the studs back towards you. You can get the old piece on. Now, as for getting the new one on, here's what I recommend. Because I haven't mentioned, but these little doodads are not unique to this excursion back door. They are on latch rods, not locking rods. They are on latch rods for not just this, but also, well, my pickup right there. They're inside that door, and I would imagine they're in a lot of the other Ford doors as well. So they're an expensive little doodad, like I said earlier, but, you know, when you got to have them, you got to have them. So <clears throat> the best way to get these on, because I was doing some door work on my pickup, and I learned this the hard way. The best way to do this is to either thread it onto the rod first, in this case, probably get it on and, and snap it, and then attach it, then you know, snap it into the, snap it into the hole there. And if it's off, or if it seems like it off, it's off, excuse me, before you push it all the way in, because those little ears there are hard to press down to push this back out. The best thing you can do is get it started and then adjust it because it's threaded. So you can screw it down or screw it up to get the height of this correct on the rod, then snap it into place and make it permanent. Because if you just snap it into place and then, oh, it needs to be adjusted, you're going to play hell trying to get this loose and shove the rod up into the right position. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's some witness marks on this. And that's a pretty good way to tell, you know, where you're supposed to set these new retainers. But that's my advice to try and get in that back end the easiest way possible. It's it's a small space. You don't have a lot of room to work. It's not fun, uh, no matter how you slice it. Now, something else I want to address real quick while I'm here. You might see these, you might do a generic search, and you might see something come up, and they'll call this a locking rod retainer. And that's, that's technically true. It can be used as a locking rod retainer. But the picture they show, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look completely different. The locking rod retainers are the little plastic buggers that go like right down in there or right up here. And if I get the camera in to show you, that's what they look like. They're, they're different. They don't have the threaded portion in here. They don't snap over and fold in half. They're not adjustable. They, they are literally meant to hold that locking rod in one place so that it doesn't drift out. So when you're looking for your parts, make sure that it looks like this. And if it doesn't, don't buy it. Because, I mean, if you need a locking rod retainer, that's fine. You know, they are useful. But this is your latch rod retainer. And you're going to play hell trying to get uh, a website that tells you that specifically and shows you a picture. Because most of the time, everybody sells, the aftermarket sells, locking rod retainers. Well, if it looks like this and they call it a locking rod retainer, that's fine. It's got to look like this. That's the big thing. Now, speaking of locking rods, I went ahead and got the locking rod off of here. Best way to do that, and you might break these, is to get in here with a screwdriver, pry one side out, pull up on the rod, then pry the other side in. I guess you have to pry them both in. But get in there and twist your screwdriver around and work this rod up. Now, it also twists back through these cables 
to get into the right position. So remember how this was oriented before you take it loose. But you'll want to do that so you can slide that whole latch assembly back. So with all that being said, I think that's all the important information. I'm trying to remember it as I'm doing the video, which is not a good way to do stuff. But uh, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in, get everything tight, and we'll verify that it works then. Whew, boy, that took a while to get everything adjusted, but it's all, it's all back in there. Everything is tightened down this time, and... We're good to go. Works fine. If we reach out here, ah, opens the door right up, and then, well, I still have to shove the handle, but I think once I spray some magic juice on the latch here and on both sides, we'll be good. I will say, having a, uh, having a couple of deep well sockets does help. That gives you because a short, a short stock, a short socket and a short extension is too much, but a short uh, socket is not enough. So a deep well is just about right for you to get in there and get all that worked and everything. So I'm gonna call that a successful repair. I'll go ahead and throw the trim back on here after I oil everything up, and then we'll be done with this project. Ta-da! Everything's back together. Got everything secured. And if we come out here to the latch, ah, one-handed. Of course, I greased. Well, I didn't grease. I used uh, I used that. I got a whole bunch of this for pretty much nothing. And because I'd never used it before, but since I got it for essentially free, I started using it. That's freaking nice stuff that PB Blaster is. Uh, but yeah, everything is nice and lubed up works good i can use one hand you used to have to use two hands and really pull on the darn thing and wiggle it around and then lift it up it's a lot better now got all the trim back in of course the handle's on so it's all tightened down it's not going nowhere so i'm going to call that successful Ugh. open that up so i can get out of here yeah look at this closes easy Opens up easy. That That's never done that before. It's the first time that back door's ever opened easily. So I'm going to call that good. I'm going to, I got some pins for this. I'm going to see if I can get that trim panel back on and then this thing will really be looking fancy. So yeah, there's the old piece. We'll go, we're going to go ahead and put that in the bag here for reference, but later. And uh, it is a T30 on those handle screws, by the way. And in case I wasn't clear, you can remove the trim from the inside, or obviously you couldn't get the back door open again. So that's how you uh, that's how you fix that. The hardest part is getting the getting the little retainer adjusted on the rod just right to where the handle is flush with the rest of the end gate. Like right here, it sticks up a little bit, but over here. You want it nice and smooth, or as smooth as you can get it. It's a little off here, but that's okay because it freaking opens easy now. That is awesome. And now the door ajar thing ought to go away off of the dash now that it's closing correctly. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I'm going to move on to the next project. We'll catch you guys later.